there friends what's up so today i thought um i would share um some source code from dom testing library so um here dom testing library if, if you're not familiar with it basically it's a bunch of utilities for uh, testing um web applications that are dom and so react testing library is built on top of this we have a cypress testing library a preact a view a angular like a whole bunch of these testing libraries built on top of dom testing library and one of the things that it exposes is this wait for element utility um, where it accepts a callback and some options um, and the way that you use it is inside of your test let's say that you click on a button and um, and then later it, like it goes and makes a request and later comes back with a an element that renders the username or something like that um, then you can say wait for element you pass it this callback and it's going to call that and if it um, that callback throws an error then it'll wait and call it again later um, and as soon as it doesn't throw an error and it just returns a value then it will um, resolve this to whatever that value is and so we can say uh, get by label text um, so find the element that has the label text username and then it'll it'll wait up to four seconds I think is is the default um, but the way that it works is it actually is using a mutation observer um, and it it sets up a mutation observer shim to work on um, older browsers and in, in node with JS Dom um, and it's it's pretty cool so um, yeah it looks like it's 400 4500 you can set a different timeout if you so choose so normally um, this like the recommendation for unit tests and uh, integration tests is that you're not actually making network calls and so it should happen pretty instantly um, but uh, but yeah it'll wait up to four and a half seconds uh, by default so the reason um, that we're using a mutation observer is uh, like th there are two ways that you could do this um, one you could have it wait for 40 milliseconds that's what the wait um, thing does is it has an interval and it will wait looks like 50 milliseconds every 50 milliseconds it'll recheck uh, to see if the callback is going to throw an error um, and so wait for element is different though because if you're waiting for an element to be rendered on the page, then um, in 50 milliseconds, if nothing has changed on the page, then there's no reason to rerun that callback. And so uh, it, we use a mutation observer because um, it actually waits for the DOM to be manipulated. And that's when we can check to see if an element has been rendered. And so like that could happen in 10 milliseconds and we'll go ahead and check right then. Um, so we saved ourselves 40 milliseconds. Or um, it could happen in 60 milliseconds. And so we don't check at the 50, we check at the 60. Um, and then we still saved ourselves uh, 40 milliseconds for waiting and not over checking, not checking too much. So that's, that's what's cool uh, about the mutation observer is it'll uh, uh, notify you when there's a manipulation to a DOM node. And so this is how we do that. We use this mutation observer shim, like I said, to, so it'll work in older browsers and in um, Node. And um, here, the wait for element takes a callback. Um, we have it default to undefined. I'm not sure why we do that. Um, I don't think I wrote that because um, the default is undefined. I don't know. But in any case, um, then we have some options. We default the container to be the whole document. So you can specify, like, I know that this is only going to happen within this area. So if there are mutations around, oh, whoa, if there are mutations around here, then that's not a big deal. Um, I, I only care about mutations that happen inside of here. Uh, we have a default timeout and then some default mutation observer options. So we pretty much just any, any changes to the DOM we want. Um, I think that's all of the possible changes that a mutation observer will let you know. So if there are um, any changes to the subtree, if it's childless changes, it has uh, direct children that are added or removed, if it has attributes that change, and character data. I... But um, it's documented. What is character? Uh, 
I know it's documented here somewhere. Eric, all right, you'll have to look look around. I know it wasn't. Um, okay, so here's how it works. We return a new promise, and um, then let's see. We have this on done, on mutation, on timeout. Uh, we set a timer um, so that we can um, reject the promise if it runs out of time. We create our observer with a new window mutation observer. And when a mutation happens, then it calls our on mutation. And then we start off the observations. We say observer.observe. .observe. I want you to observe the container. And here are my options. So subtree and all that stuff I showed you. Um, and if there's no callback um, defined, then we just call on mutation immediately. Um, so that would allow you to say await, wait for element. Um, and x would be undefined because you're not doing anything. So I'm pretty sure that's weird. I think I think what I um this is an artifact of some refactoring because wait and wait for element used to be like a really similar thing. So huh, that's weird. Don't do that. Um just use wait. Yes. I guess uh it would be like I just want it to uh, wait until there's a change in the DOM, and I don't really care what that change is, but I think that's probably looking for specific. Okay, so in any case, uh, let's take a look at the on timeout really quick. That one's easy. Um, it just, uh, after the timeout 450 milliseconds, then we're going to call on timeout, um, and that will call on done. Um, and um, we're either going to call it with the last error. Um, or we'll call it with a timed out waiting for the element. So no DOM mutations happened. So there were, was no error. We never called your um, your callback. And so there was no error thrown. We just ran it like there, there were no DOM mutations. So it timed out. Um, okay, so then here on mutation. So whenever a mutation is made to the DOM, then we're going to call this little function. And if the callback is undefined, then we'll just call it. So we said, hey, there was a mutation. It's, it's done. We just resolve to null. Um, otherwise, we're going to try calling your callback. We'll get the result. And if there is a result, no error was thrown, um, then we will um, then we'll call undone with null. Uh, so there was no error. And uh, what the result is, the callback returns a false value. Wait for the next mutation or turn out, uh, time out. So um, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then it, uh, if there is a failure, then we're going to set the last error so that um, if it keeps on failing, then we call undone with that last error that it was called with. So undone uh, is the responsible for um, rejecting or resolving the promise. So we clear the timeout because uh, um, like we, we don't want to call undone again. We don't want to call this if, uh, if it finishes early. Um, so we clear that timeout. And then we disconnect to avoid a memory leak. We don't care about mutations anymore. And then if there was an error, then um, with what's called with, on, with undone. So here that's n called with null. It's called here, uh, but it's called with an actual error here. So if there was an error, then we're going to reject the promise with that error. Otherwise, we'll resolve it to result. And uh, yeah, that's how that works. Oh, it's kind of fun, interesting. Hopefully that was interesting to you. Uh, I recommend you use this utility. I think it's great. Um, use it all the time for my async tests. Um, mutation observers are pretty cool. Uh, cool things. This was my first um, occasion to use it. I actually uh, created this in uh, Cypress Testing Library. I actually, Cypress Testing Library wasn't even a library. Um, until after I created this in my testing work. So I wanted, uh, I cr barely had created React Testing Library for my testing workshop. And um, I wanted to have the same types, types of utilities and things for um, those. Um, yeah, I wanted the same experience for both the um, React testing as well as the Cypress stuff. 
And so I, um, hmm. this one maybe. Nope, wasn't this one either. Yeah, it was somewhere around one of these maybe. Um, but in any case, I I created a Cypress testing library in here. Oh yeah, it looks like I added it later. Um, and then I extracted that. Um, but this is where I first learned about the mutation of was I um, wanted to um, wait until the DOM was made. Anyway, hopefully that was interesting and fun. And uh, I hope you have a nice day. Bye. Uh, see, I wasn't ready. Bye. <laughs>